I did consult the uh, I did consult the manual, and I was correct in thinking that uh, that the seat does not require the plastic washer in this particular carburetor. So, I'll go ahead and um, check one more time. Make sure we've got good airflow. It's going to be good little fuel flow because the fuel flows in through here, comes down through this seat. Got good flow. Now, in in this as well as any other screws that you insert into the plastic, always twist it backwards and seat it. And once it seats, proceed to tighten it. Stuff does not need to be tight. It doesn't need to be very tight, just snug. Once you get it in there, make sure your screwdriver is very well squared in there. Just a little, so I got three fingers on that. Just, just a little bit. That's all that's required. Of it. Okay. <clears throat> Here's our needle and our float. There's a little pin here. When you disassembled your carburetors um, a little while ago, you'll notice that the the needle sits on this little clip. You need to pay attention to how that was in there. Put it back in there. Take your new hinge pin. Put your new hinge pin in your float. Now, when you go to put these floats back in, there's a tab on the float. The tab is right here. That tab always face, faces upward, okay, up toward the sky. Now, you'll notice this carburetor body is upside down. So, once I put this in here, once we flip it right side up, that tab is going to be pointing up. So when it's upside down like this, the tab's going to face down as we insert it. But once it's in its regular position, it's going to be facing up. This, um, this needle and the little retaining clip, I slide in from the back end like that. Some people will put it in from the side like that. I don't like that because I've had it move and catch and uh, and malfunction before. So I've gotten in the habit of just putting them in like that and just very carefully allow your needle to fall down into the seat. Don't put any pressure on it, just hold it into place. Tighten the screw that retains your hinge pin. That's another one that does not need to be tight, just a little snug. Now we're going to adjust the float. Now if you look at that, you notice that the float is sticking a little bit up. We do want it, I always set them to where, now your carburetor is going to be like this. But when the fuel fills it up, it shuts it off. I like to have mine to where it shuts it off a little bit early, just a little bit early. If it's level, it's not going to shut it off early. The way it is now, it's going to shut it off early. However, I'm going to take this, and basically what I do is I pick up on, on the back side of this and then push down with my finger. That way I'm not pushing on the actual needle itself. So I'm going to make one little slight adjustment, and that's what I want. If you'll notice, you can see this. It's going to you know it's kind of hard. But this carburetor float has a smaller gap back here and a larger gap in the front. That's going to close it. That's going to close the fuel supply off a little bit soon. And once it's full, it'll actually put some pressure on that and make sure that your fuel is closed off. If you don't close, if your fuel is not closed off in time, then you're going to flood your cylinder with with fuel because because it's just going to keep your fuel pump's going to keep filling this carburetor up and it'll never shut off and it'll come up, it'll come through here, come through your pickup tube, come out here and into your engine and it'll, fl and it'll flood you out and your motor will, will not run right. So that's one of my tricks that I'm going to give you on that one is just, uh, just have it shut off a little bit early. And another, I can't stress the importance of when, when you do adjust that, it might be best for you to take it back out and bend that tab a little bit to, to adjust it to where it sits like I got it there. Um, you want to be careful not to smash that needle down into the seat because if you do that, 
and it deforms it, then it's, it's not going to shut off right either. Okay, we've got that assembly uh, taken care of. There's little, uh, there's little pins on these carburetors uh, on the body that, uh, that, that retain the gasket in place as you're, uh, as you're, as you're trying to refit the uh, bolt. Um, you got the one, uh, <clears throat> one hole there for your little dip tube, for your uh, pickup tube for your intake, and then there's a pin there, and then there's another pin hole over here. Holds the gasket in place. Before we put the bowl on, I like to take a piece of wire, run it up through here, make sure I can see that coming out through there, run it in through here, make sure I can see that running in through there, that's your intermediate orifice um, hole. And then this one is pretty wide open, so it should come right through there. We know we, we're well aware that all of our um, all of our orifice are are wide open and uh, free and clear. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and put our bowl on. Before I do that, I'm going to put this jet in there. Um, this was all kept together in one assembly, so there's no guesswork into which jet this is. And this is a, this is your larger jet. This is your D, your main jet. It's going to insert uh, uh, obviously slotted side out. Drop the jet down in there. Get your orifice driver tool, twist it backwards, you'll feel it drop in, drops in, and then very gently tighten it in there. And I can't stress gently enough because the uh, slotted side of these jets is very thin brass, is very fragile, and it will break very easily. Okay, and we just make sure our jet's seated, and then just a, just a little bit of, a little bit of snug it up there. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, we've got our carburetor in place. We know that there, uh, this car, copper dip tube, our idle tube goes down in there, and then our uh, main dip tube goes into this well. Obviously, we've got our well gasket on, we've got our bowl gasket on. We make sure everything else is in place. The last thing you want to do is get it all put back together and have an extra part laying there. So. That on there like that. See how that looks. This bowl, I did not test. I did the other two. I did not test this bowl for true, and uh, it's not as true as I want it to be. So we're gonna go ahead and. Uh, rub down there. On our 80 grit sandpaper that was. Now we're looking pretty good. Give one more little shot. I like the front of this, however, I don't particularly care for the back. I'm going to take my flashlight, and as I'm holding this on here with my fingers, I take my flashlight, I'm going to shine light to the front of this. And I do not see any light coming out. I do see a little light here. Give us one more little hit. Last thing you want to do is get these carburetors. because you can't test these carburetors to see if they leak until you have them installed because of the way the fuel flows into the back of them. On some of the 90 degree motors, there's an actual nipple on the bottom of this carburetor. And you can test them to see if they leak before you install them on the engine. However, in this case, the, the, the fuel comes in through the back of the carburetor, which comes in through the, the throttle body. And it's all got to be assembled on there in order for you to uh, even leak test it. So it's, it's imperative that, that you uh, 
really try and make sure that this this is right. If you get if if you get to where you've sanded so much on it and you still don't think it's right, these bowls are only twenty three dollars a piece. Buy a new bowl because by the time you get it back all back put together and you find a leak, you're gonna be like, oh, I should have bought a bowl. So I'm gonna test this one more time. <clears throat> Still don't like it. So, what I'm going to do, take a jet back out of here. Be right back. 